Today I'm going to be ranking all of the God of War games from worst to best. In my opinion, because I'm pretty sure there are going to be people there, people are going to completely disagree with my opinion. And if you do, comment down below what's your worst to best God of War game. And if you're a hardcore God of War fan, you're going to be looking at this and you're going to be like, wait, there's only six. You're going to look at this and you're going to be like, there's more than seven God of War games. You are correct. There's actually eight God of War games now. Every tier list and every tier minute format has forgot this is a God of War game. And to be completely honest with you, I didn't know this was a God of War game either. It is God of War Betray. It's a game that came on Nobel, I believe. And it came out in the year 2007. So pretty much came out the same year God of War 2 came out. And it was on old fashioned phones. And I'm pretty sure there's actually no way to play that game on modern phones. Though it might be possible, correct me if I'm wrong, there might be a way to play it with some sort of emulation tool. You can emulate it on PC, I believe, in some method. I don't know, there's YouTube tutorials out there, if you want to see them, go and watch it. But if I had to make Audible Betray, I'm just going to put it in A because it's an indie game, it's a phone game. And to be honest, I've never actually played it personally. But judging by how long that video is, the game's only, I guess the game's only like an hour long. Unless I skip the cutscenes and all that, but still. Quite a short game. I can't really comment much about God of War and um, like God of War Betray. There's not much I can say about it. But let's get straight into the actual list. So what do I think is the worst God of War game? Like the worst. This might shock a few people, but maybe not. Depends who you ask. But I think the worst God of War game is Ascension. Without a doubt. Ascension is the worst in the franchise. Why? Well, first things first is, the story is all over the place in Ascension. The story doesn't really make any sense. Second, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe there's any God of War games in the original trilogy, at least in the original three games, that actually even mention the events of um, Ascension. Like, at all. Like, God of War 3 and God of War 2, especially God of War 3, especially the Helios bit, they do mention that he sa you saved them in God of War... Um, Chains of Olympus, which is mentioned, and the brother one, God of War God Dispersion, that's probably mentioned somewhere. If that isn't mentioned, it doesn't matter, it's a better game. The other point about God of War Ascension is God of War Ascension was also the only God of War game that had online. But here's the funny part. Did you know that the online was exclusive? You had to have an online code or you had to pay for the online. Yeah, so if you didn't get your online code with your desk or you got the game years later when it was out of date, you'd have to pay money. You'd have to pay money for it. Yeah, you'd have to pay money to play the online. Also, another problem with God of War Ascension is it's the only God of War game, apart from God of War 2018, unless you've got a more powerful console, then you don't need to worry about that, that runs at 30 FPS. Yeah, it runs at 30 FPS instead of 60 FPS compared to other games, which you do feel that. You do feel it play a lot slower to all the other games in the trilogy. It does play. It does feel like it's a lot slower. And you you dare, you will feel it. You will feel it playing after all the other God of War games. Now, I could be wrong. The PlayStation P God of War games might play at thirty FPS on the PS3 hardware, but guys, if you're gonna play it, play on the PlayStation Three. Play play those God of War games on the PlayStation B Three. They look better. They play better. But we'll talk about that when we get to those games. So yeah, Ascension's just there's not much I can say about the game. Story's over the place. The Valkyries and that are interesting, to be completely honest with you. And the game, it's just... They probably don't call Valkyries, I don't know. I've not played Ascension in a while. And I have went through all these God of War games and played them recently. But I, I just couldn't enjoy Ascension at all. Complete the rest of the games, I can actually play the rest of the games. And do most of them, and complete them all pretty much. Even though I definitely with Ascension, no. Ascension just sucks. Some people might not like that. Some people might say a PSP one is ranked the worst. Nah. In my opinion, I think it's ranked the worst. But enough thought, let's go to the next game. So what do I think is the second worst God of War game? Without a doubt, I think it's Chains of Olympus. I think it's Chains of Olympus. Personally. Here's the problem with Chains of Olympus. The puzzles... God of War Ascension also has some annoying puzzles, but they're not that bad. Eh, uh, I think they are. God of War Chains of Olympus. What's my problem with Chains of Olympus? The problem is Chains of Olympus is like two puzzles and Chains of Olympus and they're actually very, very easy to solve. And there's only like two weapons in the game. You get like the Seuss Fists, what they're called, I can't remember the exact name of them. Then you get the Blades of Chaos. Now I'm just going to call them the Blades of Chaos because I know technically in other games they're called the Blade of Fema, they're called the XL Blades. I'm just going to call them the Blades of Chaos just for a simple reason, easy reason. 
pretty sure everyone calls him the laser like gears anyway. Who calls him the other names? Apart from the in the games. So here's the funny part for you. There's like a suit of melee weapon. There's like a it looks like the I don't think about that bad if you're not a god of war. It's like the gauntlet out of the funny work that obviously uses for punching. Not for using powers like Thanos does. But point is you get you literally get that weapon and the second you get that weapon they sh they chart they, they force a bunch of enemies shields to spawn around you. So you use that weapon and the weapon is completely useless against enemy shields. So you have to change back to your blades of chaos to um press square square triangles triangle triangle squares. It's something like that, I don't remember exactly what the move is to break the shields, but the point is to give you a new weapon and it's completely useless. Against certain enemies, they send the enemies that the weapon is completely useless, and which was a very poor decision, personally. Maybe it does work, maybe there was just another combo the game didn't tell me, but the point was a combo that would come up tell me how to break their shields with this, the freaking Zeus fists. Which is really, really stupid, no other game does that. When you get a new weapon and it spawns a bunch of weapon enemies in, or a new power when it spawns a bunch of enemies in, it makes the power like more powerful than it actually is. But that game, it does like the complete opposite. Also, another problem with this game is it's only like four hours long. Very, very short. I believe it's the shortest in the franchise apart from Betray. Really, really, really short. Plus, the controls are a bit basic. It is a PSP game, so I can't crap on it for that reason. And it did get poorly to PlayStation 3, but it's actually really easy. It's, Chainsaw Olympus is an extremely easy God of War game as well. Like, really easy. Like, when I was playing it compared to other games and the hard difficulties, it's so easy, it's so easy. The abilities are also kind of lame as well, like, you got the, it's called, the bill ability, which is like the best ability in the game, and the rest of them kind of suck, to be completely honest with you. And that's about it. Four hour game, only one really good useful ability. The Blades of Chaos. Chaos. It's also set between the events of, um, no, set before, or a World War 1. So it's set between the events of Ascension, no, after the events of Ascension, and before World War 1. Interesting premise. Good idea, I just don't think it worked. Now, the third worst God of War game, uh, I wouldn't even say this is the third worst, I'd probably put this in the middle, it's the original God of War game. Now, that might shock some people. Some people probably thought I was going to put another PSP game in it. No. No, I was going to put God of War 1. God of War 1 came out in 2005, and it was pretty ahead of its time. That's really ahead of its time. It came on the PlayStation 2, now, see when I said about the 30 FPS thing, it might have run at 30 FPS on the PlayStation 2, but... Most of us probably got it on the PlayStation 3 and ran it, got the God of War collection on PlayStation 3 and played that the first game on PlayStation 3 where they ran a lot better, they looked a lot better, so just take that into consideration. And I wouldn't really call them remasters, I would just call them upscales and bit better, less delays and controls. So, it's not the good as God of War 1. God of War 1, very good game. I like Ares, I like how it teaches you, you don't get teach them, you become the God of War. You get betrayed, you end up hating the gods, you can see your hatred to the gods is starting to... You don't really notice the hatred to the gods in God of War 1, you know it's really weird about God of War 1 as well. It's like, all the gods, like... What's this thing called? It's like a certain pain or something, like when you've got new power, power you go up to this wall. Right then the gods speak to you, and none of the gods look like what they look like in any other of the games. Like, all the other games, the gods look nothing like that. Like... I kind of wish they kept the original design for Hades. Hades looks really sick in God of War 1. Then he just looks, eh, it looks cool in God of War, the other God of War games, but they should have kept the Hades look in God of War 1. They should have kept that as a Hades look. I think personally, and Susan, I'm kind of glad they changed characters like Susan design and all that because they look really weird in God of War 1. But I guess you only do to see them for like a minute at most when they're speaking to you through pains. So really strange but cool that way i suppose weapons weapons or not weapons are kind of like you got over one pretty much you got the blades of chaos you get that other sword like the like what's that other god called what's that other god called it's another god that you don't think you actually kill in the like, games what's, what's her name you like never use that sword you barely use that sword compared to the blades of chaos now god of War one also does have a bit of an ability problem the same as um God of War um, Chains of Olympus, but it's actually a wee bit worse. Because it's just like lightning, it's the sliding ability, and it is so broken and overpowered compared to the other abilities in the game. Like, especially in the end game where you're trying to protect your uh, your family. You know when um, Ares casts you inside, right? 
You can get like hit combos up to like a thousand with their lightning in certain sections in that game, seriously. <laughs> That's how broken the power is. You can get like super, super ridiculously high hit combos. I'm, I'm not joking, you can seriously get like up to a thousand or even higher. There's probably a world record for that. There's probably something out there. You probably put it on the hardest difficulty and then you just use it and you just save it and you spam it over and over again. You could probably get more, maybe 2,000. I'm not entirely sure about that. But yeah, that probably... <laughs> it's crazy. Also, I need to bring this up as well. I forgot to bring this up at the start of the video. A lot of people do complain about the old World of War games. They say they are button mashers. No, they're not button mashers. See, game journalists that complain about the old God of War games being game and being button mashers. It's because they play on easy difficulty. If you don't want to be a button masher, play on a hard difficulty. You actually have to use bombs and you actually have to use them moves. Or you, you will die. Or you will die a lot. I'm just going to straight up say that. You will die a lot. So let's talk about the flaws of God of War 1. My biggest flaw of God of War 1 is actually the bit where you, the bits in the game. There's a lot of walking in the game where you have to, um, what's the thing called? You have to walk over like a big edge or something like that. What's, what do you call that exactly? I don't remember the name of it exactly, but you have to like yeah, tiptoe over these big things. But imagine uh, trying to think of an example. Imagine you touch or something like that, and you know these what are they called stand things that go left and right and that, and you have to walk around them, and you constantly keep falling off, and they're going for ages and ages and ages. Yeah. If you know what I'm talking about, think of the ship at the start of World of War 1. Or if you don't grab and if you don't walk properly, your, your character will fall into the water and you have to keep spamming X. You won't fall into the water, but you'll start falling off and you have to keep spamming X to get back on and it's so easy to fall off. And if you jump, you can instantly die. And the fall that you die, it's so stupid. Especially the bit at the end of the game is really annoying. The bit where you got to like climb some sort of big um, wall and there's like a bunch of spikes that are moving. Left and right, and if you get hit by a single spike, you go all the way back to the bottom. It's so stupid, but it doesn't matter how high you are, and it just goes, and it's just so annoying. Dark Wars is a wee bit annoying as well because obviously you don't get the the wings, but you don't get that in God of War 2 and 3, but you kind of get used to not having the wings, I suppose, in a God of War game. So that's not a flaw. I also think you spend far too much of the game in Pandora's Temple. I actually consider that a flaw of the game. I think the Pandora's Temple bit is far too much in the game. I feel like you spend like 75% of the game with Pandora's Temple. And after the underground bit, you think, yes, we're finally getting out of here, and then it turns out to be more. No, they do go a bit quicker in the later on bits, and I do like the later on bits a bit better. And it's not actually that bad. When you think about it, when you play, it's not as bad as you do when you play it. But still, it's still weird. Really so the next God of War game I'm going to be ranking is go in the middle. It's Ghost of Sparta. Ghost of Sparta for a PSP game is actually very impressive. It's six hours long, five to six hours long, plenty of difficulty you're playing on. It's quite a good game. It's actually quite an underrated game as well. The problem with Ghost of Sparta is, you know, it's crazy. Go on, Ghost of Sparta, but I'm, I could correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this game came out the same day God of War 3 came out. Yeah, it came out the same day God of War 3 came out. So the story in God of War, I don't want to spoil the story much, but you end up learning that you have a brother on that. And that's what I'm going to say. You have a brother called Beavers. That's that. That's what I'm going to say if you don't play those games. You can easily play these two games, by the way, if you don't use them on PlayStation. In fact, I'm just. I'll say this real quick. You can pretty much play all the God of War games on PC through some sort of emulation. God of War 2018 is on Steam, so you can get that no problem. But every other God of War you can pretty much play on PC. Though you're going to run into serious issues with God of War 3 and God of War Ascension, especially God of War Ascension, God of War 3 will run into a lot of issues unless you're a high end PC, and even then you're still going to run into crashes often, but you can complete the game. So you can play these God of War games, you can play most God of War games on PC, and also I need to take into consideration if you are emulating it, there is one section, in fact I'll tell you what the section is exactly, Ghost of Spar, there's a section where there's you're on a ship, near the end of the game, it's not the start of the game one, it's near the end of the game. Not at the start of the game. It's near the end of the game where you're going around like this big massive, uh, what's called this big massive waterhole. What are they called? Water shoots or something like that. Big waterhole in the middle of the ocean. It goes around and enemies attack you and like this structure your ship. you got to protect these guys and then you don't have to protect them. Squeeze it doesn't give a crap. But 
the enemies will just spawn in infinitely on emulation. Now, I heard that I think that can be a glitch where the enemies will stop spawning on the PSP version and the PlayStation 3 version. But emulation, for some reason, they say the game is completely playable and you're running through no glitches. And that is a glitch you will run into where enemies will just spawn in infinitely. So, just to warn you, if you do play this on PC, you can't complete this game actually. But on console, you should have completed no problem unless you run into the same issue. Sucks it never got patched, but. It's mostly right. Oh, so let's talk about other things I like in this game. Why do I like it better than God of War 1? Well, my simple reason is it's not annoying parkour. Like, the parkour in God of War 1 is absolutely awful, I think. Now, the puzzles... The puzzles are... Mm, also, I forgot to bring this up. God of War 1 has a really bad puzzle in the game. You have to make, like, a shape or something like that. You have to make, like, a... John and Oak to pretty much, like, make a word. If you don't know what you're doing, it's a really annoying puzzle. But if you know what you're doing, it's not that bad. Uh, puzzles are not bad in this game. PSP games don't have as much puzzles. Though I don't like that you can't kick stuff. You can't kick. You can't like um, push or pull like a big massive statue or something like that when you're pushing this game. But they did. But you can move them faster. I also like that you go to the actual Spartan in this game. Which is really, really cool. Actually, you go to the Spartan city. You actually go to Spartaca. Which you don't know in the God of War games. And you also get, uh, I've explained the weapon, you also get a cool weapon, it's like a sword, it's a, no, it's a spear and shield, it's really, really sick. Like a Spartan shield, and a Spartan spear is a weapon, you know, a Spartan shield like. That's really, really cool, that's a really cool weapon. I actually really like that weapon. It sucks to never brought it in another game, I just realised something. <laughs> I've only uh, messed up the numbers, it's not right. Uh, correct, correction fixed. So yeah, that's what I'm going to say about that game. I think it's a bit better than God of War 1, personally. Now, I might shock some people, because it's a PSP game, and that's a PlayStation 2, so I have PlayStation 3 game. And I might shock a few of you. But, yeah, I think this game's better, personally. Okay, next God of War game. Ooh, this might shock some people, and this might annoy some people. God of War 2018. Yeah, I think it's a really... I think God of War 2018 has a very, very... Good story. Very good strong. Easily the strongest part of the game is the story. The story of the characters talking, Kratos and the boy, or... Oh, what's his name again? Loki. Okay, sorry. Sorry, I shouldn't spoil that, but... You shouldn't be watching this if you're not playing the God of War games. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> if you don't want to get spoiled. Um, so the boy is a bit annoying. He talks a bit too much. And if you get lost, he'll constantly moan at you. Like, constantly say, Oh, can we get out yet? Can we get out Like, shut up, kid. Why don't you figure out yourself then instead of getting your dad to solve it out if you're freaking so confused? And he's so grumpy, he's so arrogant. For a freaking... I don't even know what age he is in that game. Nine, ten? Maybe younger? He does look pretty small for his age. I mean... Some kids are like... Some... Very small. Actually, he's really small. I'm saying that Kratos is massive, so... Think of you. Kratos is at least six feet something, maybe seven feet. So Kratos is very big. I suppose, but the boy, the boy looks like he's four foot three, which is quite small. So the boy's like five feet or something like that, kind of thing. You know, so that's not the point. Point is, he never shuts up. My biggest problem: the combat is is all right. The combat has flaws. Here's my problem: the God. Here's my biggest problem in the game. It's enemy balance, but it's enemy's health. Also, you do kind of fight the same enemies over and over again, which is a problem in other God of War games, but it's very noticeable in that game. Also, it's the only God of War game where you actually don't spot start with the Chains of Chaos. You start with the Frost stats, which when you first start, absolutely sucks. The game has a terrible balance problem. Like, if you start the game on, I don't know, God of War, I think that's the hardest difficulty, or very hard. I'm not sure what's called in that game, but I think it's called God of War, right? You're gonna get destroyed. The enemies constantly dodge you. But here's my biggest problem, and this is when I think this is what I consider lazy design. Right? I don't mind harder enemies that are harder to defeat, harder to dodge sometimes. But it's one thing you never do in a game on a harder difficulty. You never like get buffed enemies' health. Like every difficulty, enemies get a crazy amount of more health. And they just make enemies more tanky, more and more and more tanky, which I think is a really poor design, personally. Sure, the other God of War games had that problem a wee bit, but it was nowhere near as bad as it is in 2018. 2018 enemies just did more damage and oh yeah they were a bit harder to hit sometimes. They were more danger. 
they were more dangerous for sure but in 2018 they're just extremely annoying like extremely annoying him tanky makes enemies and also the puzzles are extremely annoying and and got to work on 18 so man it's like puzzle after puzzle after puzzle after puzzle after puzzle also you know another thing i hate as well you have to do it like if you want to let's say what are they called to get more health or to get more power or to get more spartan rage because you have to get more spartan rage in that god of war game it's just kind of weird because like, in god of war that's god of war you have to charge up your fire sword and go so far but that's fine upgrade is easy so instead of opening chest, which yes, you do open chest, but you have to do a puzzle to unlock the chest. And it's pretty much the same puzzle over and over and over again. You have to throw your axe at something, and you have to throw your axe at something else. You have to do it in a time limit, because most of them are time boost. You have to do it in certain order. Hey, guess what? You get one out of three. You get one out of three of them. And you have to get like three if you want to get a single upgrade. And it's just it's just really competitive and it's really bad. And the Valkyries are quite annoying as well, the end game to fight, though you can exploit it. And the abilities can also be exploited that ability that makes your ability to charge back in, so you can just make the game far too easy, even on the hardest difficulty. Yeah, I just think the game has a lot of flaws, personally. Okay, now this is a hard one, I think. This is a really hard one. So, some days I would say God of War 3 is better, some days I would say God of War 2 is better. Mm, I think today, sometime, I think today, I suppose, I'm going to see God of War 3, we'll put that in the same place, we'll put God of War 1 in the first place. So, let's talk about God of War 3. God of War 3 is a freaking amazing game, arguably one of the best games that came out in 2010. I would actually say it's very high up there in 2010. 2010 was a really, really strong year for gaming though as well as 2007, so, what came out in 2010? Black Ops, Black Ops 1, Bad Company 2, Mass Effect 2, Fallout New Vegas, um, more games that I can't think of at the top of my head. 2010 was a great year for gaming. But God of War 3, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood as well. No, yeah, yeah, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood as well. 2010, absolute great year of gaming. I would say it's the best year of gaming. I would say 2007 is a better other year than 2010 because that was like the start of the series and the end of some amazing challenges. Halo Reach as well, though. I think Halo Reach is one of the better games in 2010, personally. So, go to War 3. The first four hours of the game, you're literally killing gods. You're hunting, killing gods. You're literally like hunting and killing gods for the first. You kill like four gods in like the first four hours. You kill um, Poseidon. Hades, Helios, and that annoying god that thinks he's the Flash. Uh, yeah, you go that, then the game slows down a bit. It does slow down a bit, but the slow down is not that terrible. Though I will say something, there are some other boss fights as well, like the Scorpion and the... What's that big guy called? The big fist? What's his name? I think that guy's got... Then you just boss fight and the end's amazing. Let's talk real quick about it. So my game does slow down a bit slow, as I said. Puzzles, puzzles. The garden puzzle can be quite annoying if you don't know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, it's not that bad. If you don't know what you're doing, the garden puzzle is quite annoying. Um, the piano puzzle, or the sword piano puzzle, I like to call it, where you have to like connect all the sword parts. Then you have to do a bunch of buttons like you're freaking playing the tar here. That puzzle is freaking god awful. Because you just got to click like multiple buttons at one story. Ah, it's terrible, man. It sucks. It really sucks. I mean, if you play games like Tar Hero, I'm pretty sure you can deal with it. See, so, you know, it's not that bad. But if you don't play games like the Tar Hero, or you don't play back in the day, or you don't play games where you have to like click a bunch of buttons, like you're freaking using the guitar, or using the drums, or using some instrument, if you're not like an instrument person, you're going to hate it. If you're an instrument person, it's not that bad. But yeah, that's that absolute god awful puzzle, and I'd say it's what potentially the worst puzzle in God of War for sure, would you? Here's another flaw of God of War for you, I think, personally. It's near the end of the game, very close to the end. Not the end, I think the ending boss fight with Zeus is absolutely amazing. One of the best boss boss in end boss fights in gaming. But my problem is when you rescue Pandora, it's kind of like the boy, you know me, but the worst of the boy. 
she always runs into traps and you're gonna save her and you're gonna do annoying puzzles and times. You gotta do this, run around for all this, do that, fight a bunch of enemies, and then there's a bunch of spikes, so you gotta grab onto the happies, which is a very annoying feature in God of War 3. I hate that about God of War 3. You gotta grab onto like these flying board things. Then you gotta do it so many times in the game. I think that was a missed opportunity. So yeah, I would say God of War 2 is better. So God of War 2, the first hour of the game is freaking amazing. The closet fight at the start of the game, freaking amazing. Then it slows down a wee bit, but it kind of slows down to the Kotori way, so it's not that bad. Then it slows down a wee bit more before you with the like the horse section and that way you do like that puzzle. But that puzzle is quite easy where you gotta get the horses all the horses to move. And then you gotta fight the, the barbarian that you can't borrow one. And it's an alright boss fight, nothing special about it. Then the big ice um thing. It's alright. The abilities are gonna war free as well. I forgot to talk a bit about his God War Free. God War Free easily got the best abilities. Or up there. The problem with God of War 3 is the Blades of Chaos ability, where um, you put, like it puts a shell all around you, then arrows come out. Then, if you have an upgrade, you can spam, you spam circle, and a thousand arrows come down. It's easily the best ability in the game. The rest of the abilities are not as, nowhere near as good as that, I think, personally. So, that's pretty much the ability all you're going to use in the whole game. Really overpowered, but I like it. It's fun. Let's talk about God of War 2. Let's talk more about God of War 2. So God of War 2 introduces the the bow, which is cool. No, the bow is a lot better than God of War 3 personally, I think, because it doesn't it doesn't use um magic. It uses a living bar in God of War 3, it uses like a stamina bar or something like that. I'm not entirely sure what the name of the bar is. I don't remember. That's really cool. So the way you get to so much, you also get introduced to the the winds. Yeah, they did decently for the game as well. Also, um, I like the bit where you get into just the Atlas. That just talks about um, the, the Titan War, and you work with the Titans. You learn to hate the gods and use the Titans to destroy them, but also you get the Titan powers, which are really, really sick. The Rage Mode comes back again as well. Talk about the Rage Mode. Did you know that the Spartan Rage is only in... They mainly got it. It's not in the PSP games. Not in the PSP games. They might not be the same. It's not in the PSP games at all. It's really weird, Spot Rage. But it's not. So, what else do I like about Call of War 2? Yeah, the Atlas bit. The thing when you introduce the Atlas, it, in it explains the events of when you obviously captured Atlas in this game. And I like that. I like that. That's what it's a reference to. It's a reference to this game. Before this game came out, by the way, so it didn't come out until 2008 or 2009, I believe. And this game came out in 2007, so it references events to that game, which is really, really cool. Like, a few years earlier. A couple of years earlier. Really, really cool. Then you got the end of the game. Oh, man, the last two hours of this game is absolutely amazing. So the game does slow down a bit. The Sisters of Fate Temple does slow down a bit, maybe a bit too much. And some of the puzzles are annoying, especially that ice puzzle. The ice room puzzle, that puzzle is quite annoying. If you know what you're doing, it's not that bad, but it's quite annoying if you don't know what you're doing. The fire puzzle as well, where you um, there's a big fire bird that's trying to burn you. Like you shoot fire at you and you got to use the barrier to block and it just spawns in for the enemies. That is extremely annoying, that section. Because you don't have your health upgraded. Yeah, if you have health upgraded, it's not as bad. To get all the upgrades in this game can be a wee bit hard, but the God of War 3 has got a bit of the same problem. Something getting all the upgrades can be an absolute nightmare. That's a bummer, God of War 3 2 and 3. Like, if you don't look everywhere, you're going to most likely miss a health orb to get your health to max or a power up. No, God of War's case. God of War 3 is like the, the ability over time. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, I was going to talk about the end of the game. So, the end of the game is like five boss fights. I don't know. Technically, is it technically five or is it four? I have to tell you right now how many boss fights you have. So, so after you've done the temple and that, you have to fight um, the Spartan guy. Obviously, it turns out to pretend you can't see because of the shadow. I wouldn't really say that's a boss fight, but you can do a decent amount of damage to you. So, that's like the first fight. I wouldn't really say that's a boss fight. I would say that's like a mini boss, right? You fight him, then you fight the Kraken. The Kraken boss fight. Kraken boss fight's alright. It's about average. And then you fight the Kraken boss fight. Then you fight the two sisters of fate. So, two of the sisters of fate. 
you fight like the demon one, then you fight the other one that's in the room. Now, all of a sudden, you have to fight like over the sword in God of War 1, the big massive sword, before it breaks and a bunch of enemies, and you have to fight one of the sisters of fate there, which is really, really cool. And if you die, um, Ares kills you, which is kind of funny in the in the game. But if you say this, then you kill Ares, which is kind of, kind of weird because it went it's back to the events of the first game, which is really, really cool that section is. Then you got to fight the other one, then you trap the other one, then you got to use the other one to kill the other one. Then you got to keep smashing the glass to beat it. I would have to show you to explain, but it's absolutely amazing. <coughs> Man. Great boss fight. I'll give you the best boss fight in the franchise. Then after that, you go and fight him. Um, the big monster, which is kind of a boring boss fight. And you know what? And the reason I'm calling it a big monster is because. I think you all know what I'm talking about. It's that, it's that one that, that people said was like the first SJW or something like that. <laughs> I've seen a video somebody said that was like the first time or something like that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, I care, but uh, it's that, it's that, it's that big fat thing. Um, that's what I'm going to say about it. I do, I, if I said what it was, then YouTube might, you know, remove the video. So I'm going to see what it was. Let's see what it is. Uh, it's not a very hard boss fight. It's kind of boring. Good. I hit a bunch of anger at belly. Then you got the suits fight. The suits fight at the end of God of War 2 is... It's good. But it's a bit too short. And I think the original plans for God of War 2 was to kill Zeus. But Sony came around the corner and said... Money! 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 We need money! 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 So they left it a clip and then you got God of War 3. But God of War 3 is amazing, so... I've got them a pass. But anyway, I've been talking 32 minutes on my phone. Let me know in the comment section. What's your favourite God of War game? What's your worst the best God of War game? Make sure to like the video. If you're new, subscribe. I do try and do tailless videos or watch the best videos on the weekly, though it's hard. But even if you don't see these videos on a Sunday, pretty much almost live stream. A few times every time, every week. And then occasionally do a video. But I am more of a live streaming channel than I am a video channel, personally. Just to tell you all in advance. And I need to drink something, so I'm going to end the video here. Peace out. Bye. See you all next time.